Welcome to Opalash TV. Today we are in Madrid, just outside the National Auditorium of Music, where Cygnus Asset Management's offices are located. Cygnus Asset Management was founded in 2006 as a niche and independent investment manager. Cygnus was also the first independent absolute return manager registered with the Spanish regulator, the CNMV. Cygnus specializes in European alternative and absolute return investment management and has two different teams, a long short strategy specialized in the utilities, energy, renewables and infrastructure sectors with an 11 year track record and the other managed by José Luis Pérez Esteve which focuses on event driven and special situation opportunities with a 7 year track record. Both have extensive market experiences and coincided at Banco Santander early in their career. How do you both remember your early days in prop trading and on the equities, derivatives desks? Well, I think that prop trading has a lot of similarities through the, to the hedge fund management. In prop, what you are allocated is a budget of risk and normally also uh, some drawdown uh, limits. No? This is actually what we do in, in the hedge fund, no? uh, managing risk portfolio in the most efficient way we can and uh, try to limit our drawdowns. The change would be that uh, during these uh, 12 years uh, managing a hedge fund, uh, what you start, uh, we have been getting more more, more fundamental, but uh, without forgetting what we learned in our past experience. Our time at Banco Santander uh, was very enriching. It was a very entrepreneurial uh, mindset. The investment methodology, the investment philosophy, which we use now, as well as the uh, risk management, all developed uh, during that period. And from our point of view, that was when the pillars of what we are doing now were really set. During these past years, I think the most important thing was to realize that markets go in cycles and being able to adapt to the different uh, cycles, both in terms of different environments, as well as uh, technology-wise, and being able to really uh, make money and manage risk all through all of these different periods is actually the, the most interesting thing that uh, these past well over 20 years have shown me. Taking a look back at what has happened in financial markets over the last decades, what would you think were some of the lessons that you have learned managing your portfolios throughout that time? Well, what we try all the time in the markets is try to take advantage of, uh, to, to be able to build an edge, right? So we try to leverage in our experience and in our strengths. Uh, during 2008, for example, what we realized is that uh, liquidity suddenly disappeared and in a very wild market conditions. So we thought that ourselves and nobody had an edge in that type of a scenario. A tough decision that we took was to go 100% to cash into the fund and stay on the sidelines. We just waited patiently there until liquidity started to, to come back at the beginning of November and is when we started to get involved in the markets and try to get profit on the big dislocations that the, the big uh, tsunami of September and October left in the market. Uh, I think that this does come back to managing a big derivatives book in which you're always uh, looking at what can go wrong and at different ways of hedging uh, the risk you have on the book uh, because usually you cannot sell one thing and buy the same thing at the same time. You have to look at different opportunities elsewhere and see how you can offset the risk which you don't want. How do you generate uncorrelated returns within your strategies? Well, we don't design the, the, the fund or the way we manage the fund to be uncorrelated. It's just the output of the way we, we do things and the way we manage the portfolio, the way we, we get uh, to our ideas probably a legacy of, of, of our past in the prop trading experiences that we had. 
Also because we see the short book not only as a hedging center, but we see the short book as a profit center by itself. And uh, the consequence also of using uh, different tools to try and, and soften or limit our, our drawdowns when the market can get uh, very complicated. The reality or the, uh, the experience is that after these uh, almost 12 years uh, managing uh, the fund, the output has been a very low correlated returns. Uncorrelated positive returns, that's the holy grail of, of our business, of what we do. The only thing is that it's very difficult if you just look for that. No? I think that what you have to focus on is what you know how to do and the results will just speak for themselves. I think that is what we have been doing for well, during this, these past almost 20 years. We invest in European companies and we do bottom-up research on these companies from a top level or from a high level uh, perspective. And then when we find something interesting, we tend to look across the capital structure to implement the trade in the best, well, with the best risk profile. What we try and achieve is to have as much convexity at the cheapest possible price in order to benefit from whenever you have a significant movement in your individual idea or in, your, uh, in the uh, portfolio as a whole. On top of that, what we also try to do is once we have the portfolio with all of the ideas and, uh, and with all of the risks, we try to eliminate the risk which we don't like or, or which we don't find acceptable okay, through a hedging overlay, which we tend to have most of the time. At the end of the day, when we build up our portfolio, what we are trying is to look for situations in the market where we think there is an asymmetry of risk, you know, where we think the risk that we are taking, we are going to be rewarded. And this is actually what we are looking all the time. And probably this is also another consequence why, why the correlation to the market is low. You know. How would you define your edge? Well, we have decided to, to build our edge within uh, several concepts. No? One is the experience of our team, no? having people that have 15, 20 plus years on, our, on the sectors that we focus, either as analysts, on their portfolio management skills. No? Also, I think that what we, uh, what we do is we, we try and focus in just a number of companies. So we follow around 100 names, 100 names that we have been following for the last 20 years. And it's companies that we know well, the business, and where we can you know, trade around the, the, our fundamental views uh, based on, 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 the, on the expertise we have uh, knowing these uh, subsectors. Another fact is that uh, we have established a fast decision process where most of the work is done ex ante and where normally what we are is waiting for something to happen. No? If this happens, then we will buy the stock here or if this doesn't happen, then maybe we can short the stock here. And this is giving us big advantage in, in the way, the speed we can take the, the decisions. And uh, lastly, what I would say is uh, concentration. No? So we have, at the end, you have to take some risk, to, to one, some kind of risk to try and produce returns. And the risk we, we choose is concentration. Uh, we think that being focused, we can concentrate more than portfolio. But the experience of managing concentrated portfolios, I think, also gives us uh, an edge in the way we manage the fund. No? And I would say 90% of uh, the risk in our book comes from uh, Western Europe 
and within that from the year stock 600. However, uh, I think our edge mainly comes from the way we implement uh, these trades. Okay, I, I think our ability to look across geographies, across the capital structure with a high dose of optionality really does give us a differentiated uh, return as it has done historically. I think uh, that that together with uh, uh, the fact that we know Europe, we've been trading Europe for well over 20 years, we have been managing risk for a long time as well, well over 20 years. And as we have proven in the past, we have been able to make money in these, uh, in these markets. I think that that is actually what what our edge is. What a fund like us can do, so we can see in our track record, we could make money into, I mean, we made money in 2008 in one of the biggest uh, drawdowns that the market has had in the last uh, decades. We made money in 2009. I know the market was uh, up 20% in 2009, but we made uh, close to 20% returns while our sectors were quite flattish during that period. During 2012, for example, uh, remember the market was a big uh, V-shape, uh, we were able to make uh, returns in a very softly and gently way, in a constant uh, way, where our investors uh, didn't suffer uh, during 2012. So this is the type of the good things that an, a strategy like us uh, can produce. No? This fund invests both in equity and credit. The reason for being able to invest in both is actually that we like to invest and make money all throughout the cycle. Okay, this isn't a fund in which you click, clip coupons uh, because opportunities arise and we take advantage of them when we spot them and when they happen. The QE has really made, well, for, I would say our job much more difficult. And I think that as that QE comes out of the market, which is, it is in the process of doing, it will allow us to take advantage of all of these imbalances that have been created. And from our point of view, I think we're quite excited about uh, what's coming up. Well, our investor base is quite diversified. I mean, we are being a Spanish firm, we, we only have like 27% of our, of our assets in, 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 Sp in Spanish people, institutions. And the rest is divided between continental Europe, uh, United States, which is uh, almost 25% of our, of our assets, and the rest of the world. By type, uh, most of it, around 40% of it, is uh, family offices. But we also have uh, around 20% of pension fund money, and then the use of high net worth individuals, uh, other investment funds, and of course, banks and insurance companies. Well, currently, with the markets at uh, close to all-time highs, what we are seeing is a lot of interest for for specialized investors, institutions, etc., in alternative investment. No, I think that they're starting to be a little bit more concerned about, about how fast and how, how fa high the market has gone. And probably they are evaluating more seriously to introduce alternative investments within their portfolios.